Hey everybody, it's Dustin Eubner here from Electrician Information Resource. And chances are you've landed on this video because you are searching for information on an electrician apprenticeship in Alberta. So what I'm going to do for you in this video is go over all the steps it takes to become an apprentice and to go through the entire journey so that you can become a journeyman and earn a very high salary. So today we're going to be covering what it takes to become an electrician in Alberta and we're going to talk about what makes a good apprentice, uh, the different jobs they can get into, um, any financial assistance, and all the certification requirements that you need to become a journeyman. So if this is what you're looking for, then stay tuned. So here we are guys, let's start going over what it takes to become an electrician in Alberta. So the entire apprenticeship can be roughly one to four years. So it's, there's a lot of detail to go over. So in this video, I'm gonna to quickly touch on the main topics and then I'm gonna make a series of videos that go into each topic more in depth. So we're not gonna miss anything, but this one is the broad overview. So let's, uh, let's start going through this. So if you're looking to get into the trade as an apprentice, electrician in Alberta, these are going to be some great steps for you to follow. So on my article here, we got this quick menu and uh, it breaks up the article into the separate chunks. So whatever you're looking for, you can go right to it. But uh, let's go through this. So becoming an electrician in Alberta, there's lots of steps uh, that need to happen before you can even become one. If things are slow, it might be a little bit harder if you have no previous experience to get into the, to get a job as an electrician. So sometimes a trade school and any sort of electrical training uh, might be a good thing to do while things are slow. But if uh, there's lots of work in Alberta, the companies will just hire whoever, get you started. You can go there, prove yourself and get indentured. So becoming an electrician, uh, now we can talk about some good qualities of an electrical apprentice. So as an apprentice, you need to be constantly proving yourself that you are worth uh, becoming a journeyman. So your employer is constantly looking at you and assessing your attitude, uh, the effort you put in at work, your time management, all these sorts of things as an apprentice so that uh, he thinks you're worthwhile keeping around. So we can go over that. Um, there's tons of different electrician jobs as an apprentice that you can find. Um, we can touch on the examination process, any uh, certification you need in Alberta, and there's some financial assistance available for apprentices in Alberta. So let's uh, go through this. Also, if you're looking for pretty much the ultimate guide to becoming a successful electrician, from start to finish, and you just want to get into it, uh, check out my ebook. So that'll be available right here. And don't worry, I'm going to be posting a link to this uh, page in the description below of this video. So you can simply click there and you'll be uh, looking at what I'm looking at right now. So here we are, we got tons of information on becoming an electrician in Alberta. So there's lots of general duties, electricians. Um, are going to be faced with day to day, but depending on the industry you work in and what job you decide to take, they're going to be different. So there's some general duties you can read up there. Um, electrical apprenticeship in Alberta. There's lots of different qualifications you need to even get indentured with the government. So this is, yeah, you are getting set up through the government. So it's not just like one company or a few companies that are like, hey, I wanna hire you as an apprentice and you come do the apprenticeship. No, this is a governed thing. Um, each province is different. So Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, anywhere, it's all gonna be different. Um, so yeah, this one's specific to Alberta. Red Seal exam, once you go through your whole apprenticeship, you can uh, Challenge your Red Seal exam, and this allows you to work all throughout Canada, <clears throat> plus it's internationally recognized. So 
if you want to move somewhere else or even the states having your red seal is going to be a good thing to make the the process smooth so and like i was mentioning before qualities of a good apprentice you got to have good communication skills you got to be able to listen and take directions as well as communicate any of your questions rather than doing something and hiding it you got to be able to communicate with your journeyman or whoever else you're working for that's teaching you so communication is big business skills as an apprentice maybe not so much like you don't need to really focus on that but you should be picking up on it as you go through your apprenticeship because once you're a journeyman let's say you decide to be a contractor and work uh, for yourself your business skills are going to come into come into action hardcore there so little pro or uh little thing to pay attention to there problem solving skills um, as an apprentice you might not be faced with too much troubleshooting because your journeyman will be taking care of that but depending on his thoughts on your skill level he might get you to problem solve some electrical problem let's say if you get a call out and the customer has an issue with an electrical circuit they have he might get you to troubleshoot it um, with his uh, with him overseeing you and then as you become a journeyman this is going to be absolutely crucial that you need this uh, these problem solving skills it's kind of hard to teach on paper and through tests it's pretty much all field experience so that's a, a big one you want to pay attention to as an apprentice uh, here we go into some qualities of a good employee so be productive be passionate about the trade be able to manage yourself and your time being goal oriented is going to help as well so these are all things you want to prove to your employer as you're there working as an apprentice so that uh, he has no problem keeping you around so let's go into some different jobs um, an agriculture electrician you're going to be working on farmers equipment let's say so big farm pivots uh, they're pretty much big sprinklers that water large fields of crops. You could work on feed lots that uh, feed cows and everything like that. Chicken barns. <laughs> it's, uh, it's quite endless. I've done quite a bit of agriculture work. Um, appliance service technician. You can work on, uh, let's say, stoves and anything throughout uh, residential appliances and commercial. So... Think of a kitchen in a restaurant there's going to be some equipment in there that uh, definitely relies on electricity and you might have to go out there and troubleshoot or replace or fix or install so lots of work there <clears throat> automotive service technician so if you like working on vehicles you can uh, pursue that communication technician so that would be working on cell towers climbing really high on those towers installing lights radio antennas anything like that so some options there uh, motor systems technician so you might uh, work on fixing electric motors and all of these are gonna count to your apprenticeship so it doesn't matter which one you pick you're gonna be working towards journeyhood which is which allows you to be absolutely diverse so uh, heavy equipment technicians so these you might work on big backhoes uh, large dump trucks let's say in a big mine um, there's big heavy-duty dump trucks that uh, obviously getting used and abused on a daily basis and you you'll be the ones fixing them so heavy-duty equipment technician so those are definitely not all the jobs as an apprentice electrician but uh, that touches on it so let's go over the electrician exam so a big thing with the exam is it's 70% uh, to get a pass. So you don't have to go there and get 100% to pass. 70% uh, is 100. That's kind of the saying. So, but it's always good to shoot for higher than that, right? If you go to work and you only know 70% of what you should, that's not really a good thing to to be pursuing. So try to do your best in school. Um, we go in depth on information there and some financial assistance 
for an electrical apprentice in Alberta. Um, the government of Canada definitely has some stuff out there. So each year you can get apprenticeship grants. So if you go to school to be your first year, I think you can get $1,000. Go to your second year, third year, I think you get $1,000. And because your fourth year is a bit longer, um, I believe you can get $2,000. So yeah, lots of, uh, lots of assistance from the government. Like I said, this is a government thing. They want people to be electricians, so they're willing to help you out as you go through the trade. Another great thing as an apprentice is that you go to work and learn. It's not like you're going to school for four years or two years and you have to go get a job somewhere else after school to make ends meet. This is, if you go to work, you make money and you're learning. And then you take some time off, two months let's say, and go to school. So the two months of the year, you have no income, but usually you can get um, EI. So the government helps you, helps pay you as you go to school. Plus you can get these grants. So it's pretty much like you're making money your whole apprenticeship. So it's a great way to learn and earn. So yeah, this is a really large article. I touched briefly on each subject. And uh, if you want to check this article out, I'm going to be posting a link in the description below and you can definitely click on over and you'll be uh, seeing exactly what I see here. And if you're looking for the ultimate guide to become a successful electrician, you can definitely check out my ebook. It's a great, uh, great information resource for everything from start to finish to become a successful electrician and earn the big bucks. So thanks again for watching everyone. Please don't forget to subscribe. It's uh, really helping me out if you do so. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment below and I'll do my best to answer them. So thanks again, everybody. Have a great day.